I'm here in Medjugorje. I'm with, what's your name? Jean. Jean, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Brighton in Sussex in England. And I was married to, uh, my husband was from Iraq, Baghdad, Iraq. Oh, wow. So I got married when I was really young, mm -hmm. 17. And I went to Iraq. And there my journey in the church began. Is, was I was Christian? not a Catholic. Was he a Christian? Very committed Catholic. Very committed. He was? He was. Wow. Explain now. Yeah. So he came to England to find me and then <laughs> uh, took me into the church. Uh -huh. um, and I loved it. I loved everything about the people. I loved Iraq. I loved everything. Mm -hmm. And on the plane, mm -hmm. he said to me, uh, I said to him, sorry, I don't know anything about your country or your people. You haven't told me anything. Mm. So he said, what do you want to know? I said, I don't know what I want to know. I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. So he said, OK. He thought a minute and he said, you only need two things. And the two things are everyone will love you and you'll love everyone. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Everyone loved me and I loved everyone. It's the Middle Eastern culture. I now. just loved it. Yeah. And for me it was like home. Mm -hmm. I was an only child mm -hmm. and I'd always longed to be part mm -hmm. of a big family. Well, I couldn't have had a bigger family mm -hmm. that I married into. They were huge. It's Middle Eastern style, right? Huge <laughs> family. Yeah. And all very lovely and all all shapes and sizes and ages and brilliant. Mm -hmm. So then I decided because I'd married in England in the Catholic Church, but I wasn't a Catholic. You may like the Church of England? I was Church of England, but not mm -hmm. my parents didn't practice. Mm -hmm. So I just had some RE, as we call it, in mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. And I just had, um, yeah, just bits of uh, a little bit of knowing about Jesus from books and things people had shown me or talked to me about mm -hmm. but I didn't pray my parents didn't pray mm -hmm. unless we prayed in school and we prayed in school assembly sometimes yeah. um, so then I decided because I would promised I'd had to promise mm -hmm. in my marriage uh, in the Catholic Church in England I'd had to promise to bring any children up of that marriage in the Catholic faith, yeah. which I couldn't possibly do because I didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd better take instruction. Mm -hmm. It was just a practical thing. It wasn't a huge desire to become a Catholic. Mm -hmm. It was just practicality. So I asked, um, obviously I didn't speak Arabic at that time, mm -hmm. so I, I couldn't understand, so I decided to seek out English-speaking priests mm -hmm. and there were wonderful um, Jesuits in the, in the college, Baghdad College mm -hmm. and one of them, Father Joseph Merrick, whom I pray for his soul every Mass I go to mm -hmm. ever since. Lovely man. Beautiful priest from Boston in America mm -hmm. and he used to come to the house once a week to give me instruction. Mm -hmm. And we used to have an amazing afternoon. It was every Tuesday afternoon. Wow. And uh, he, I used to make a, a cake mm -hmm. and he would drink coffee and I would drink tea. Mm -hmm. And um, they have the vow of poverty. So he walked everywhere mm -hmm. in his Jesus sandals. Mm -hmm. And he really, I think, appreciated a bit of comfort to sit and to have refreshment as well as yeah. teaching me and we became good friends as well mm -hmm. and uh, I remember my main thing I was interested in was miracles mm -hmm. as all I wanted to know about yeah, was miracles yeah. and, and uh, I've had a good few mm -hmm. in my life and I've experienced a good few miracles mm -hmm. they're all the time if you've got eyes to see them Miracles are happening all the time. So, um, yeah, so I went to him, or well, he came to me, I should say, mm -hmm. and he was a very good teacher of the faith. Mm -hmm. that, they, that was my grounding. It was really the only teaching I've had. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and I didn't want those times to end. They were brilliant. But then eventually I got received into the church in a very small chapel in Baghdad. And one of my husband's cousins was my godmother. Mm -hmm. My brother-in-law was my godfather. Mm -hmm. And it was a lovely celebration. And um, yeah, I haven't looked back really. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's so nice. We should yeah. make a movie, Hollywood movie, movie out of that. No, it's yes. so beautiful. Yes. Just listen to her. Yes, <coughs> it, I wish you could. I wish you could. I wish I could show you what I experienced. You know, yeah. I wish I visually, could visually, visually, yeah. because it was very special, and people were lovely. And the, my husband was a Catholic Chaldean yeah. mm -hmm. from the Chaldean Church, the yeah. Chaldean Rite. Mm -hmm which is, you know, like, like similar to Orthodox, mm -hmm. but affiliated to Rome as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, I got used to that, but I, I also would go to the American, the Latin uh, American church wow. in, in Iraq. Yeah. We'd go to both, mm -hmm. depending where we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, I think I'll fast forward after that. I no, don't know. It's beautiful. Did you, at the time when you went to like the, the American masses, was it still a Latin mass you went to? Or was no, it, it wasn't. It, it was just the Latin rite. Yeah. I mean, no, yeah. not, not actually in Latin. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but was it, it hard for you to, go to, to adapt to the culture there when you went? Came? Not at all. Not at all. Is I it? loved it. I yeah. felt very at home. Mm -hmm. I never felt, in fact, I felt the opposite. I felt that English people are very cold mm -hmm. and unwelcoming mm -hmm. and I wasn't terribly proud of being English at that time because mm -hmm. they were they were so opposite and I was an obvious foreigner mm -hmm. but they did nothing but welcome me, Muslims and Christians, and Christian, both of them very uh, however welcome. they did nothing but welcome me mm -hmm. and I've always felt that, that I consider myself now 50% Iraqi and 50% English after all these years. Mm -hmm. um, when, when you started with him, did you fall in love with the Catholic faith or was it still because, like practical, because you needed to raise the children? You no, I, I think it's a, a long process of a lifetime. Yes. You know, it's not, it's not a, it doesn't click like that. Mm -hmm. But I knew it was good for me. Mm -hmm. And when I very when I'll, I'll back yes. backtrack a minute yeah. just to when my husband first took me, mm -hmm. my husband to be first yeah. took me to Catholic mass, and it was all in Latin. Mm -hmm. It was in the 60s, yeah. so I couldn't understand a word. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going on. He was serving mass, mm -hmm. so I was sitting by myself. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I don't know what it's all about, but I can understand why I felt very comfortable. Mm -hmm. I liked it, mm -hmm. but I didn't know why. How do I like it? And I don't understand it. That doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. But of course it was the spirit, but I didn't know that then. I just, I just felt, yeah, that's, it's good. It's... Mm -hmm. You came back home. I don't know what I felt like. I felt yeah. comfortable. comfortable. Yes, so yeah, that, that was all I wanted to backtrack, so mm -hmm. oh, go back again, so where was I? Um, and then you did the, uh, the catechism with the priest from, the Jesuit from America? Yes, yes, you were he, he, was, he was fantastic, yeah. he really was. We stayed there a good while mm -hmm. in Iraq, mm -hmm. and then... Did you, um, if you look back now, is there something the inspiration what you got what is the, the Catholic faith what he taught you something a nugget for people uh, well my thing as I've mentioned before my my kind of all I wanted to know about was miracles do yeah. they happen now yeah or, or was it just then or is it just like a history book yeah. or that kind of thing yeah. but but um, he said no of course they happen now mm -hmm. And he said, every time there is a mass, it's a miracle. Why? But you see it now. Why, why is it a miracle? Because of the transubstantiation, the, yeah. the, the, the body and the blood of Jesus has been transformed. Um, so 
and he, he said to me, isn't that a miracle? I said, yes, I have to admit it is. And then he said, look at your own life very carefully mm -hmm. and you will see miracles if you want to see them. Look at your own life. Yeah. And um, so I did start looking at my life. And my mother had lost six children before me. So, and then I was born and I felt I'd escaped the net somehow that I was allowed to be born. So I felt that was a kind of a miracle. For me it was, because he said, look at your own life. And that was, I went right to the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then I, the second time, I thought, um, the second thing I thought was, my mother had shared with me that I was about nearly a year old and she'd been bathing me in the bath. Mm -hmm. And we had, they had an old fashioned gas heater mm -hmm. to heat the water and apparently the pilot light had blown out. And so uh, suddenly I was, uh, went limp in mm -hmm. her arms and she screamed. She said, I, of course I don't remember because I was a baby, mm -hmm. but I passed out. I was mm -hmm. obviously being gassed and she ran into the street screaming, my baby's dead, my baby's dead. Because she'd had lost five or six others and then me. Mm -hmm. She must have been mm -hmm. like a maniac, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I think that was my second miracle. And be I wouldn't have even gone there if this priest had not said to me, look at your own life. So, so I got used to that, looking at things in my life. What, what, how did that happen? That's not possible. And the things that aren't possible, you can see God's hand in it. Yes. And that's what I've come to realize. And I've come to look for it too. Mm -hmm. Where's God's hand in this, mm -hmm. in that situation, in, in everything? Recently in, in COVID, in, when we had lockdown, the first time I went out, I, I said to Jesus, I don't know what's going on, but just show me, show me something when I go for this walk. And he kept showing me like spring flowers coming in the grass, uh, new life, you know, there's a new life and uh, maybe showing me, um, I don't know, different things, usually with nature, in nature. Buds coming on the trees and new leaves and, you know, mm -hmm. and it was it's like encouraging me to focus on that, not on the COVID situation, not the lockdown, not anything but him and, and what he's doing. Look at what I'm doing. Don't look at what the world is doing. Look at me. So I got that message and I've always had that message. Mm. And I'm still trying to look what he's doing in my own life now. So, um, I see you made the experience because you know, they say here, you can see our lady in the eyes of the people and you have this gentle smile, this gentle kindness, I joy. Yes, peace. I enjoy life. I enjoy people. Mm. I enjoy our lady. She's been extremely instrumental in my life. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to share this. Uh, yeah. One time I went on the mountain mm -hmm. and, and I had an experience of Our Lady. That was here in Medjugorje? Uh, here in Medjugorje, yeah. yes. Um, how many years ago? Mm -hmm. Don't know. Let's, let's start by, uh, how often have you come here? Can you count it still? Is it no, I can't count it. It's, I've been coming regularly since it's, since I first came in the 80s yeah, 82, as, you said, eh? as much as I can you come as much as I can I'll come Why? because it's my piece of heaven on earth mm -hmm. can you describe it to somebody who's watching who hasn't been here yes it's come and see I would say come and see because you will have if you so wish mm -hmm. if you open your heart you will have a personal experience of Our Lady mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. She's here, she's here in the flesh, mm -hmm. in reality. So 
it's I've, I've been I used to go m many years 20 years over 20 years mm -hmm. as a helper to Lourdes with mm -hmm. the sick mm -hmm. and she's there also but but she's here in a different way mm -hmm. here is for your spiritual growth yeah. Lourdes is her, her, her vision for Lourdes is that bring the sick in procession mm -hmm. and they will be healed and mm -hmm. if you ask and believe and they will be healed and open up your heart mm -hmm. and I haven't been to Fatima I haven't been called to go to Fatima because I believe I heard one day that the visionaries had said that Our Lady had said Fatima um, sorry Medjugorje is a continuation of Fatima yes. so why would I go back I'm here in, in my lifetime and it's Medjugorje, so I, I haven't been to Fatima. I've no need to go to Fatima uh -huh. because I come to Medjugorje. So mm -hmm. it's my place. I love it. I love being here. Mm -hmm. And you uh, said it's a, spa a space of spiritual growth. Can you describe the process? They also call it the School of Our Lady. Yes, if you listen to her and if you just go and sit with her, mm -hmm. my favorite place is the Blue Cross. I just go there and I can get lost in the Blue Cross. Time doesn't, I don't even know what day it is. I just get lost and she'll talk to me or show me things and, and I only have one problem coming to Medjugorje and that I don't like to leave. Mm -hmm. That's my one problem. <laughs> I never like to leave. Mm -hmm. And one particular time I'd been at the Blue Cross mm -hmm. Uh, sitting there for a couple of hours, I think, and I was leaving either the next day or the day after, mm -hmm. and I s expressed my sorrow to my to, to the Blessed Mother, and and she said to me, I was coming down looking, she said, look at the stones. So I looked at the stones, and she said, your life will not be easy, which it hasn't, but I will never leave you. This is my promise to you and I believe it and I feel it. I feel she doesn't leave me. She hears and answers me. Sometimes I, if I'm upset, I can't hear clearly because anxiety or sadness, Anger, sadness. I don't get angry, thank God. I don't suffer with it, but I get sad or, or um, you know, yeah unhappy about things sometimes and yeah but so then her, her life hasn't been easy look the pia da moment my life hasn't been easy her no. life hasn't been easy so you know, she understands she's the one who understands i know i know she understands but she knew what she knows ahead what i'm going to go through yeah i don't know but she knows mm -hmm. so um i found it very helpful her encouragement mm is always good. Um, I, th I think I need to talk, I keep getting it in my mind to talk about the mountain bit. Yeah, that's what I just wanted to ask, so let's get, get to the mountain. What yes, the mountain? I'm not sure what year it was, it was about, yeah. I don't know. It doesn't matter, the mountain, you went up the mountain? Do you know what year I went up the mountain? No. Went with Dominic Dring. Um, Yeah, it must have been about maybe 15 years ago. Yeah. So before George died? Or more, maybe, maybe 18 years. Let's say about 18 years ago. And um, I, I was in, a, I wasn't in a wheelchair. I was, I was using crutches because I'd, um, I'd had a very bad hip and um, I'd been asking God for a miracle for my hip and um, the, the miracle was to be the surgery of a new hip but I was, I didn't, I missed that. I was waiting for him to do a supernatural miracle because I've had them before. And, um, but anyway, that was my, 
my lack of discernment, nothing to do with God. And um, so I was in a lot of pain because I was walking uh, and I didn't know it at the time, but I'd rubbed, it was bone on bone, and I'd rubbed my hip away. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd worn it away. So I was very lopsided. And um, so I prayed in front of Our Lady in the statue in here in Medjugorje, in front of the church, when we arrived in that group. And I'd asked her, it was a crazy idea, I thought, but I'll ask no, her. No, it's honest. Yeah, I, I it's asked awesome. her, yeah. can I go up the mountain? Mm -hmm. And in my condition, anyone looking at me would think, you are crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, I asked her for the grace, and I felt she said to me, Friday. So then I found out our group were going on the Wednesday. And I spoke to the leader of the group, is it possible to change the day to Friday? And I told him, I shared with him what I'd experienced with Our Lady. And he said, no, I'm afraid I can't because everything's booked and I've booked in ahead what we're doing. The program is all set up. It has to be uh, Wednesday, so. I thought, well, I'll try on Wednesday. Maybe Our Lady would give me grace for Wednesday. But in my mind, no, it's got to be Friday. She said Friday. Friday doesn't mean Wednesday. So that was fixed. So I went and tried with the group. I couldn't get anywhere. I, I didn't even get to the first station. The first station, no. I had to come down and of course they were quite a while so I sat on the seat at the bottom waiting for them and just praying the rosary and thinking why didn't I listen you know well I did listen but and then in my mind I was trying to you know, how will I do it on Friday and I was trying to um, ask the Holy Spirit for a plan so that I could be do this on on Friday, as Our Lady had said. So on Friday came, I dropped out of the program and I looked at our group and I looked, who's like a strong young man that could help me because I needed help? Couldn't do it on my own. Would he mind dropping the group? And a friend of mine, Dominic Dring, he won't mind me saying that, he'd be very happy that I said his name. Um, he dropped out and he said it would be nothing but a privilege and an honour, he said. So, so he came up with me. It was a very, very slow process because of my pain and the way I was. And um, we started off in the early afternoon. I'm not exactly sure what time. Very sunny, very nice weather. And... Um, we were going very slowly and, and praying at each station and taking our time. Mm -hmm. He supported one side and I had the crutch the other side. Mm -hmm. So we get uh, nearly to the top and suddenly the sun disappears behind the mountain. Mm -hmm. It kind of dropped mm -hmm. and suddenly all the people disappeared. It was like oh, it's going to be dark. Mm -hmm. It won't be long before it gets dark. Mm -hmm. And neither of us had a torch or water, mm -hmm. which is, they say, you should always carry a torch and water in Medjugorje. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a torch or water. So I said to him, we, get, we need to get down, Dominic. How are we going to get down? He said, well, I was a Boy Scout, I know. Oh, what I'll do, I'll leave you holding on to a rock or a tree or a bush and then I'll scout a little bit and then come back to you and then we'll go a little way and we do it slowly, slowly. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we got down. Mm -hmm. But I th is it the fourth station or the third? I can't remember exactly mm -hmm. where Our Lady meet, where, where Jesus meets his mother. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which one it is. It's either the third or the fourth. Mm -hmm. And 
We got down that far, it was very dark, we couldn't see anything. There were no lights, no people, didn't see a soul, didn't hear a thing. And um, we approaching that station yeah. where Jesus meets his mother and then suddenly there's this statue of Our Lady appears. Well, it, it, was, it was there waiting for us, you could say. Mm. Um, it was, it was, I don't know how high, about as high as that tiling there where, where the glass finishes and the mm. tiling begins. Yeah. It was about as high as that from yeah. the ground. Yeah. And it was Our Lady, I think, with her hands like that, her arms, palms open. It wasn't the Our Lady of Medjugorje. Mm. I don't know what it is, Our Lady of the World, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, but it, there is a statue here, but I'm not quite sure where it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a glow around it, like it was glowing with light. Mm -hmm. But it was a statue, mm -hmm. and we approached it, the statue, and Dominic whispered to me, I don't know why he whispered, you know, when something's different, people whisper. <laughs> he says, Oh, maybe it's That's maybe. our lady, mm -hmm. it's Mary. And I said, yes, I know. <laughs> and, and we very acknowledged her and gently walked past slowly. And then as soon as we passed her, we turned round and she'd gone. She'd gone. She'd gone. And I said to Dominic, you don't know it because it's your first time here, but there isn't a statue of Our Lady on Cross Mountain. Apparition here, no? Uh, no, uh, we cross were Cross Mountain. Mountain. Yeah. Wow, that was... We were North Cross Mountain. Mountain. Yes, we went up there. Wow, on Friday, sure. Yes, cross, yes. Uh -huh. And we went up there and yes, and he was astounded. He said, really? I said, yeah, That that's a miracle. We, she appeared, and do you know why? Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I said to him. Do you know why she had her hands like that? Mm -hmm. She was saying, there you are, I've been with you all the way, you're near the bottom now. Yeah. I've been watching you, now you're there, you're safe. You came up and you came down safely. Mm -hmm. So she answered my, my desire for, well I didn't, I didn't ask for a miracle, but I got one. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt it was amazing. She kept her promise. She said she would give grace for Friday. And she did give grace for Friday. No doubt about that. And uh, Dominic said to me afterwards, you know what, we're going to be joined at the hip from now on. I said, no, you don't want to join my hip. It's not good. <laughs> Don't be joining my hip uh -huh. <laughs> because it's, it needs help. <laughs> um, but he was, you know, that's a saying in English, yeah, yeah, do you? Yeah. When you're very close yeah. to someone, you're joined at the hip. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this, this experience. Mm. Well, it was something we, just two of us, shared. Mm -hmm. And when we got back to the house, of course, they'd been so worried about us because there were, we didn't, we didn't have a phone, we didn't have water, we didn't have a torch. We just went mm -hmm. um, and excused ourselves from the day program. But of course they'd had dinner mm -hmm. and we hadn't turned up, two people missing mm -hmm. out of the group. Mm -hmm. um, so we, luckily we found a taxi mm -hmm. and went back and the reception was a big call because mm -hmm. we'd absconded mm -hmm. <laughs> like naughty children. <laughs> Beautiful, no? As it was a, a wonderful thing, yeah. yes. And that, and, yeah. yeah, well, that's, I, I think it's a miracle that anyway. It's a miracle, absolutely. I wanted to share it because I'm here in Medjugorje and it's, I want to miracle. give glory to God and thank Our Lady for all her miracles. And how was the story, like you said, you heard about Medjugorje with your husband and what was your reaction? When we first heard, you yeah. mean? Um, well, it sounds good. Let's go and see. Yeah. Sounds you good. See if it's a hoax. You said, no? Yeah. Well, we thought it might be, we, yeah. but we thought we no way of finding out. You better go and check it out. Yeah. Go. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What? Well, how else can you know? Yeah. 
and we did, and it was yeah, brilliant. Right. In, through Dubrovnik, communist town. Communist town, yes. And time, yeah. And and how was it to come here then in 1982? I think it was. Yes, uh, it was very. Uh, when we arrived, we felt the oppression of the people, the um, how difficult it was for them to live in fear. Really, they were they were frightened, and. Um, and it, there was nothing here. Mm -hmm. I think there was one shop or stall, something like that. But there was nothing. Uh, there were houses, and there were, and people were growing tobacco at the time, and they had the tobacco hanging over the balconies, drying. You still saw that. Uh -huh. Still saw that, yes. But I think Our Lady must have changed that because. Then it changed to vineyards later because mm -hmm. why would she want to kill anybody with a cigarette smoke? Yeah. She doesn't want to do that. She why would she want tobacco yeah. growing in so her, wine, in her place? <laughs> She'd rather have vineyards, so yeah. she planted vineyards. I'm sure she did it. Uh -huh. It wasn't it wasn't well the people did it, but you know what I mean, it's her yeah. idea. So the spirit is still here after like you came 82? Of, of course it's here. Uh -huh. She's still it's here. here in a big way. In a big way. Yes. Uh -huh. The more I come, the more I want to come. Uh -huh. And I never want to leave. Uh -huh. But because the medical facilities aren't brilliant here, I'm, uh -huh. I, I'm reluctant. To, I would have lived here otherwise. And, and when you came? What happened the first week? So you came here? And what did you think at the end of the journey when you came here? Um, felt sorry for the people mm -hmm. because the lady in our house, uh, the next morning after we arrived, she, ha she had inspectors, mm -hmm. two inspectors dressed in black who looked very official with mm -hmm. their notebook and mm -hmm. stern faces mm -hmm. and wanted the money that we'd paid mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. And they took it mm -hmm. and they just gave her a small amount of what we'd given her and they took the rest. Uh -huh. And she, she said that happened every time. Uh, you know, every, they know when you have a guest or pilgrims and they come and Yes, you and have that's to. Communism. We have yes. to be clear about what's happening. Yes. And we are getting there again. Okay. Yes, and it, yeah, it's very difficult for them, and to practice their faith was really difficult. Yeah. But they didn't stop, mm -hmm. and that's why Medjugorje, I think, was chosen by Our Lady because of the strong faith of the people that mm -hmm. live here, were born here. They are very strong, and yeah. That's, that's what Our Lady said. The yes. asked them, why are you coming here? She said, because I yes. find faith, yes. strong faith, grounded yes. faith. Yes, she I does. Think, yeah? Yes, correct. And, and, you, and your, your husband, what did you think after the church? Oh, he was exactly the same. He loved it. And he, he wanted to get a flat here, and it, but then he wanted to get a flat everywhere. He was like that. <laughs> travel man. He, he, he just enjoyed people, enjoyed uh, cultures. different cultures, different ways of life. He loved the church. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we never did get a flat here because it just didn't happen. And Yes, didn't materialize, no. But I come as often as I can, even now. I love to come. And you brought people? Our Lady always says, bring people. Oh yes, I bring people all the time. Yes, yes. I bring people all the time and I love, and I talk about it and I try and encourage people to come. Come and see. Because, you know, you can talk about something yeah. and it's like talking about Jesus, but until you experience him, mm -hmm. how are you going to know? Yeah. You, you can't know. You need to know. Each one needs to know yeah. in their hearts, what, n not, not just yeah, be told or read a book or something. Go and find out. Very important that because a lot of people it's a hoax, never have been here. How can they know yes. if somebody talks to them? Go yes. and see for yourself. Very important somebody watching now. Yes. Come and see yourself. Yes. And then you can talk about something. It's, yes. it's common sense, human logic would 
You pray the rosary now? I do, um, I do, and I find, I don't know how I stumbled on this, but I find, I do a listening rosary sometimes when I just listen. Mm -hmm. I, I pray it slowly, or, or even one Hail Mary, mm -hmm. and I just, I, I was taken by surprise one day, I prayed a, a slow Hail Mary, mm -hmm. and I realized that Our Lady was talking to me as I'm saying it. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing her and saying the Hail Mary, so, and it's like, it's like praying in tongues. Yeah and um, because I'm kind of a charismatic Catholic, so I do pray in tongues. Mm -hmm. But if I want Our Lady mm -hmm. to, to speak to me, I say a Hail Mary, slowly, very slowly. And then I just listen. And that's what she gives me something. Beautiful. And you said you're charismatic. Charismatics, they have a important the personal relationship with Christ a lot of people look for that How yes can they have that personal relationship what would you tell them get baptized in the Holy Spirit which is different to your baptism that you have as a baby as a your baptism in the church being received into the church mm -hmm. you can get baptized in the Holy Spirit as many times as you can receive it it mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you can ask for it mm -hmm. yourself ask mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit to baptize you yeah uh, or you can go to where, where they're doing maybe Life in the Spirit seminars, we call it, mm -hmm. or, or sometimes they call it in England, Sons and Daughters of the Living God. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, like a course, mm -hmm. a six-week course where you learn about those things and about the gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, two people will lay hands on you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and ask for the gift of the release of tongues, if you wish. Yeah. It's not forced, it's just very, as you like, you could take it or leave it. That's how God is? Yeah, that's how God is, but it's on offer. Yeah. So when I first kind of found out about that, mm -hmm. I watched. Pe I was at Walsingham, the shrine of Our Lady in, Ma uh, in in England, and I watched some of members of our church going forward and being prayed with. And I thought, they're all falling on the grass. What's that about? Yeah. What What's going on? Mm -hmm. What's going on? And um, and then I thought. My next thought was, well, if God's giving something, I'd like it as well. Mm -hmm. So I joined the queue, and the next thing, I was on the grass as well. <laughs> And that's how I got into it. It uh, was just, again, maybe curiosity again, like... Mm -hmm. I didn't kill the cat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it did kill the cat, no. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that was a, a brilliant thing, really, for me. It's really helped me, my, that way of praying, because I can hear. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I didn't, I didn't, couldn't hear before. Being guided by the Holy Spirit. Open my spiritual ears. Yeah. And eyes too. Yeah. And sometimes I'll see things that mm -hmm. other people don't see. As the priest said in Baghdad, yes, yes, you have eyes to see and ears to hear. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it's been a life's journey and still going on. Yes, you learn more and more. No? Yeah, I learn more and more. Look how we met. And I enjoy it. it. Yeah. You yeah. enjoy, no? I see your smile. I You're enjoy happy. it. I enjoy my faith and I enjoy talking about Our Lady. She's, she's the best. Why is she the best? Because she just is. <laughs> 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 she just is. She's amazing. Uh -huh. She just is um, always there. Uh -huh. She's always gentle yeah. and kind and yes. loving and, and does warn you about things if you care to listen. Mm -hmm. Um, keeps her promises. Mm -hmm. She said she'd give me the grace for Friday on the mountain and she did. Yeah. And you had the ears to hear it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a bit, I get a bit fixed like that if she <laughs> says something. I just, uh -huh. if, she, if I believe she's, I've heard it from her, mm -hmm. I just know it's going to happen and that's it. And I just and how, believe it. How is it to be guided by the Holy Spirit? 
That's well, similar to to our lady. Well, our lady's full of the. Ho- no, it's, it's, just the it's, container. it's the Holy Spirit through our lady, yeah. I guess. Exactly. Uh, but um, as as one, as a child, you run to your mum when you something goes wrong or you need help, don't you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that, to me, the mother, mm-hmm. uh, she's our mother, our spiritual mother. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't I run to her to? sort things out when things go wrong or if I need something Mm -hmm. I'm inclined to go to Our Lady and that's why she's been so instrumental in my life but the Holy Spirit works in so many ways and once you click into that you can see it feel it but it's very personal what's personal to me may not be personal to you and God speaks to everyone uniquely Mm -hmm. the way he's created them so that they can hear him that person hears in a way not my way another way you know you can't say a block thing is right for everybody it isn't it's it's very personal and And I know it in the heart now yes and I'd encourage everyone to build up their personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus, with Our Lady, because then and learn to listen if you can. I I love adoration, mm-hmm. so when I go to adoration, if it helps anyone, please try this. Mm-hmm. T- I take a little notebook and a pen, mm-hmm. and I just pray a little bit. And I I use two sentences uh, from Scripture, mm-hmm. or I did in the beginning. Now I just go straight into it, but. In the beginning I used to say, speak Lord, your servant is listening, and wait, Mm -hmm. or just pray in tongues in my mind, Mm -hmm. uh, just wait, Mm -hmm. whatever comes in my mind I write it down in my little notebook, and then by the time you've been in an hour adoration, you've got quite a few words written down, Mm -hmm. they may not make sense, but persevere, because later on they will make sense, and sometimes a month later, what you've written, you think, my God, that happened in adoration. It will click. Yeah. You think it's gobbledygook, but it isn't. At first, you think like that. So that's what I started doing. Mm-hmm. Started helping my, me to listen. Mm-hmm. And also, um, what's the other one I use? Um, Oh, I shared it with you, Kim. What was it? Um, That's already beautiful adoration. As Pete Lord, your servant is listening. Ah, uh, my sheep will hear my voice. You speak it out. Yeah, I say it. My sheep will hear. Well, Jesus said yeah. that. Yes, I Jesus said scripture. it. So it's not a lie. Yeah. So okay, I'm one of your sheep, Lord. I need to hear your voice. That's what I say. I need to hear your voice, and I wait. Either one of those two sentences I use, and, in, in and it works. Yes. It works because God listens and He answers. It's not all about speaking prayers and reams and reams of prayers. You've got to have. It's a two-way conversation, but you've got to listen and you've got to, you know, act on it as well. Beautiful. And did you make the experience that? Confession helps to clean the pipeline to listen. Oh, de- go away. definitely, especially these days mm-hmm. after COVID, we're all so many people suffering with anxiety. Myself, I had been to, you know, anxiety, stress, worry, um, all those things that block you from hearing. Mm-hmm. They will block you. Mm-hmm because it's you who's being anxious and you who can't hear Mm -hmm. and so if you can surrender there's a wonderful novena called the surrender novena dondo lindo yes Yes. it's very powerful if you surrender your anxiety your worry your cares your your negative thoughts anything that's negative Mm -hmm. if you surrender it god will give you Peace, the, the joy. yeah, the reward of himself really, and just transforming 
those thoughts into godly thoughts and happy thoughts or hopeful thoughts, whatever. I yes. had the same experience. We have to decide every second of the day. I'm not serving this God of sadness, sadness no. which is Satan. I yes. serve the God of joy. Yes. And these thoughts come because the fight is in our mind. Right? That's that's correct. Yes. I'm not serving the God of jealousy. I'm serving the God of adoption. Yes, yes, like, yes. I'm not the, the God of judgment, but the God of mercy. Yes. yes, more like yes. That. Yes. And what is the effect of confession? Can you tell people who are, who are, who are scared to go to confession? It's very central here in Medjugorje. What would you tell them? About oh, don't be scared because it's a really a very mm -hmm. gracious gift. And mm -hmm. just try to give your fear or your, your being scared. Give it to God if you can. Just mm -hmm. say it and ask him to hold your hand and go with you. Mm -hmm. and ask Mary to hold the other hand and go with you. They will go with you into confession yeah. and they will support you and encourage you to just tip it out. Like tip yourself upside down. Because I see we've got the great grace <coughs> in the Catholic Church of a sin bin. I call it a sin bin. Yeah. where you can, It's like a bin where you can throw, where you throw all your garbage, your rubbish, you can just throw it away. Mm -hmm. And and God says, mm -hmm. he doesn't ever remember it again. What a gift is that? So it's gone, it's disappeared. And then you get the absolution and forgiveness and the blessing to be at, come out free. Yeah. And I experienced yesterday, I went to confession, wow, so powerful, you're joyful, happy, peaceful. Though. It is, yes. You get, it's like having a shower on the inside. Yes. You shower before you put your clothes on, so why wouldn't you shower your inside as well? Mm -hmm. And what would you tell you were married or married a long time? For, 48 years I was married. What is the secret? 48 of, years. Wow, beautiful, congratulations. Yes. What, what is the secret of a happy marriage? Um, I would say it was faith, really. Mm -hmm. Faith and enjoying um, moments together <coughs> that might be a bit crazy or silly or you know enjoy, have a bit of a laugh as much as you can mm -hmm. um, enjoy who and what God has given you mm -hmm. your children your family your enjoy as much as you can and yeah and delight in the Lord. keep hopeful yeah. keep hopeful and when things go wrong just pray about it, ideally together if you can. Mm -hmm. If you can't, you can pray yourself and bring others with you that don't pray. So it doesn't matter really. As long as God gets the picture, he can help you and he will help you through, through anything. Yes. And how did you know that your husband was the right, right man? I surely didn't. He, he, he felt it um, and he, as soon as he saw me, he said he knew I was the one. So he pursued me mm -hmm. until he got me. <laughs> yes. Lucky um, man he is. <laughs> I don't know. I think I was lucky as well. We were both lucky. Yeah. Um, did you stay long time? Did you go back to England with him after a while? Well, yeah, we, we, did, we were up and down. We were coming and going because I had my four children were born in England and I wanted them to have a British passport and I didn't know what the medical facilities were like in Iraq at the time and I, I thought it'd be wiser if I had each child here, uh, not here, I mean in England. So we did it that way and then we were trying to decide whether we should make our permanent home in Iraq or permanent home in the UK and, and then I think the political situation answered that for us because things were getting tough and difficult and uh, always threatening, you know, things happening. Um, before I knew my husband in 1959 they'd killed the king King Faisal of Iraq and they dragged him through the streets, killed the royal family, so there was then a president in power and, uh, and they were always having new president, killing that one and then they'd have a, a, a war and another president would come, so it was unstable 
politically very unstable. And my father-in-law was a fantastic man and he actually was concerned also for his younger sons. He had, he had twins, twin boys. And um, so when we eventually did settle in England, he sent his twin boys to live with us. Uh, by that time I had three children and these twin boys arrived um, who were 13 years old and I had them until they got married. Um, so they became, we were more like parents to them than their parents. My, my husband was the eldest son, so in, in Iraqi culture that he will take the place of the father. Um, I found that quite strange when I first went there because, you know, I'd never seen anything like that. Uh, and the girls would, would take the lower place, like in the household there were lots of boys and girls, but the girls would always uh, have to wait on their brothers. So they'd all come in tired from school or college and it would be the girls' place to give the brothers their slippers for their feet and to give them a glass of water each when they came in. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't get it themselves. The, the daughters would, the sisters would get that. But that was the, that was automatic. They didn't even need to be told. They just did it automatically. Mm -hmm. They served the, the brothers. Mm -hmm. But the eldest brother was like the top brick on the chimney. He was second to the father. Mm -hmm. So I found that quite uh, fascinating. That's the beauty of different cultures. Different culture. And that, so then, of course, my husband being the second to the father. He was the one, we had the base camp was in our house in England when people wanted to come. It was always to us because he was like the father, like Jesus says, if you've seen the father, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's like that with, with the culture. Uh -huh. If you've seen the eldest son, you've seen the father and he has the same authority. Mm -hmm. He can make big decisions. Yeah if his father is absent, mm -hmm. even over his m mother, mm -hmm. the wife, mm -hmm. because he's the male, he's the, mm -hmm. the, the top male, yeah. That, but I quite, I, got, I, like, I like it somehow. Mm -hmm. I got used to it. Mm -hmm. So and probably it's enough now, isn't yeah, it? No, it's <laughs> beautiful, it's beautiful to listen to. That's right. And um, at the end, again, what would you say people, no, first of all, yeah, now looking at, all the places, it's Cross Mountain, your favorite spot here? Or is it adoration, um, or everything, the whole package? No, adoration. Adoration. Adoration is there. Yeah, uh, and the Blue Cross. And the Blue Cross? Yeah. I love the Blue Cross. Uh-huh. Yeah, and oh. Mass, of course, is love. The Masses here are just something different. I love hearing the, the, the homilies. Oh, and the, and the young. Filled. Oh, amazing, amazing. And the singing, I love the singing. The music. Uh -huh. Not much I don't love. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for taking us on this cultural journey to Iraq. Oh. It's beautiful for you. I love the Middle East, <laughs> you know, to listen to this story. Oh, there's oh. quite a few here at the moment, aren't yeah, there? Yeah, yes. Lebanon a lot of Lebanese They're people. They're so nice, the Lebanese people. There's the restaurant, you know, the Lebanese restaurant. Next week, next Saturday opening. I don't know oh, really? No, I didn't know. There's, Where? There's Beirut Medjugorje restaurant here. It's down the road. Opposite Hotel Klimo, Namex. Opposite Namex down the road. Opposite Amex. Namex. Lamex. Namex. Yep. If you want to go, I, I think next week it's open. Right. And uh, what can I say? Thank you for that beautiful oh, interview. Oh, thank you. Thank you for asking me.